Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at what happened when I ran my air source heat pump in sub-zero conditions. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I talk a lot on this channel and on my blog about air source heat pumps and how they can save you money with your hot tub running costs as electricity prices have, have gone through the roof. One of the gray areas with running air source heat pumps is what happens when you actually get to the, the rating of the unit and also what happens when you run these air source heat pumps at zero degrees or 32 degrees F, you know, what kind of output do you get from them? Now, we've had a particularly cold period here for the last 10 days or so, and it's given me huge amounts of opportunity to, to run some experiments, get some numbers, and kind of explain exactly what happened when I've been running my air source heat pump in sub-zero conditions. Now, before I get on and look at those results, always a good opportunity, get that plug in there to say, come on, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification to be notified when my videos go live. I put two long form videos just like this out every single week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. And they all focus around DIY hot tub building, air source heat pumps, plunge pools, cocktail pools, and everything in between. So please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It just gives me loads of motivation to make these videos. Okay, plug over. So what are the results? It was Saturday, it was 8 a.m. and it was minus four Celsius, which is around 24.8 degrees F. I've got written on my sheet in front of me because I can never remember all these numbers. And that was the temperature outside. And during the week, I tend to hold my hot tub around 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86 Fahrenheit. And then at the weekend, when I want to use it, I take it up to 39, 40 degrees, 102, 103 uh, Fahrenheit. So it was Saturday morning, it was minus four outside, and it was time to turn on the air source and see what kind of results it was going to get in these sub-zero temperatures. Now, what's interesting about air source heat pumps, and certainly manufacturers like to kind of shy away from giving you the, the COPs or those coefficient of performance at those really low temperatures, especially if the unit is not rated to sub-zero temperatures. Now, the comfort line range, which if you've watched other videos on this channel, you know that I know and love that model and push it quite hard. It's a great product, it's really well priced, and we're about to see if it's any good in sub-zero, even though it's only rated to zero Celsius or 32F itself. Initial results were pretty good, so it didn't go bang, it didn't stop working, you know, all these uh, things that you might think happen when uh, you hit those sub-zero temperatures and your unit is not rated to it it kicked in, it started to heat. And I came back an hour later to take a look at the temperature. It was still minus four outside and it actually increased the temperature of the hot tub by two degrees Celsius. So I was, I was pretty pleased. I thought maybe this would kind of curve off as it got a bit, you know, uh, as it got hotter and it was harder to increase the temperature with that ambient temperature still remaining at minus four Celsius. However, it didn't. It continued to heat constantly at two degrees Celsius, and, and it did that all the way up to 39 Celsius or 102 Fahrenheit. And it took around four and a half hours to, to get there. As you would expect, two degrees an hour, it's gotta go up nine degrees, not rocket science. So I was pretty pleased. I, I was actually quite surprised as well. Now I must say the air source that I have is the 20 kilowatt model. It is quite a large air source. Uh, however, I have had a couple of other customers get in touch who do have the sevens and the nines, and they were still seeing uh, significant benefits over using the electric in these cold conditions. Uh, they did say that the heat up time decreased. Um, however, what they did say was that the amount of current being drawn wasn't double. So it was kind of halving their heat up time, but it was not doubling the cost. So that's kind of important. What else was interesting as I was kind of looking at the app whilst it was heating up, now I wasn't sat there for four and a half hours, of course. Uh, however, I did periodically look at it. 
With the unit, certainly the comfort line being an inverter heat pump, it means it can run at uh, different percentages. It doesn't need to be on at 100% all the time. Now, the unit was clever enough to realize that obviously it was cold outside, so running at 100% wasn't gonna give it the 100% the of output. So I found that over that four and a half hour period, it was running around 75 to 80% during that time. So it could obviously tell that it wasn't gonna get the full benefit of running at 100%, which I thought was uh, was pretty cool. So what does all of this cost and how? what was the savings when I was running this at sub-zero conditions? So I've got these numbers written down because obviously I can't remember them all. So here we go. So we've established that my unit was heating the hot tub at two degrees Celsius per hour um, in those sort of negative or sub-zero conditions, which, which was pretty cool. In contrast, now I can't actually remember how well the uh, three kilowatt electric heater did or didn't do at those kind of temperatures. Um, what I can say is that it used to heat at around half a degree an hour uh, in, in good conditions. So we'll say that these aren't good conditions. However, we'll, we'll keep with that sort of half a degree an hour just to use as a comparison, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll generalize and say it's probably gonna be less than that. So a three kilowatt heater costs about a pound or a dollar 20 an hour on current prices to, to actually run. Half a degree an hour, we're looking at 18 hours heat up time, plus a, a little bit here and there for, uh, you know, for, for heat loss or, or, or not those that perfect sort of half a degree. So we're looking at somewhere between 20 to 25 pounds, I'm estimating here. Uh, for the statisticians amongst you, you know, please let me generalize, um, you know, don't cripple me in the comments because I can't do maths or anything like that. So roughly speaking, I think that at those temperatures, a three kilowatt electric heater to get me from that 30 degrees up to that 39 was gonna cost around 20 to 25 pounds over that 18 or 20 hour period. In contrast, my air source heat pump off my smart meter was pulling around five kilowatts an hour and it was costing me around one pound 66 to do so. Four and a half hours heat up time, we're looking around about the seven pound 50 mark to get my hot tub from that 30 degrees up to the 39 in those sub-zero conditions. So what does that mean in terms of efficiency? Roughly speaking, it's around four times faster than the electric heater that's in my spa pack, and it was around 62% cheaper. Again, just looking at my numbers on my uh, sheet in front of me here. So it's quite the saving, even though that unit is only rated to zero or 32 degrees F, I was still getting four times quicker heat up speed and it was saving me around 62% in the running costs. So I'm really pleased with those results. So just in conclusion, these are, these are my figures. These are figures that I've pulled from my own hot tub. It's around 2,700 liters, so it's quite a large one. And the, the unit itself, the comfort line, is the 20 kilowatt model. As I said, I did have a few customers email and contact me just to say that you know, their units were still working in sub-zero. Their heat up times were almost doing the same as mine. So if you remember from a previous video, my heat up time was around eight times quicker in normal sort of ambient conditions than my three kilowatt electric heater. So it's kind of halved and that was exactly what my other customers were finding with their heat up times on those smaller comfort line units as well. So we're, we were looking at around half the efficiency of when it's mild outside, but the best bit is it was working in sub-zero I could get my hot tub when it was nice and cold outside and it didn't stop working or, or anything like that. If you've seen my other video on the, the channel, there's a very cool defrost video where you can see how the unit just defrosts itself. If that kind of thing floats your boat, then check it out. It's well worth a watch. As always, I appreciate the view. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.